uncovered and I have the pleasure, you already know, it's uh, the aspiring you know, member of parliament for Iwutu Senior West, Mr. George and a man we know as a marketer and I quite remember when you know, he dyed his beard yellow to promote the brand he represented and he revolutionized really the marketing industry and then won the marketing CIMB marketing man of the year. So I have the pleasure and honor to introduce Mr. John. And a very good morning to you and welcome good morning, to, Bridget. Yeah, oh, good morning to all your viewers. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, good to have good you join too. us and um, I want us you know to start from the very beginning. Um, when you were growing up, what is it that really that you were passionate about that you really wanted to do? Um, I was passionate about becoming a vet. Mm, I, 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 loved, I loved animals. Or I, oh, I still love animals. And I, I was dreaming to become a vet one day. But, did, you, uh, did you own any pets? I, I, have, I have owned pets um, from the time that I was a kid. I used to have rabbits. I used to have guinea pigs. Of course, you've always had dogs in the house. Um, I've, I've raised horses before. Um, and yes, I have quite a number of dogs in my house. Right now, currently? I have, yeah, and, uh, I have some birds as well. What breed? I love dogs too, I have bull bulls. Well, um, I, have, I have some bull bulls, I have some Maltese poodles, I oh. have, I have, uh, I have um, a pit bull, um, I have a rottweiler as well. Okay, isn't it when you were growing up, your parents loved animals, so they had some at home, and you developed the love for it, so you had teddy bears, you know, that <laughs> <laughs> Well, yeah, we've always had animals in the house, uh, but I, I, I I like animals. I I I guess there's some kind of a connection between me and them. Is their their calmness, their loyalty, their trust, um, the way they they respond to you when you treat them well. And these are some of the the things that I guess endeared me to them or endeared them to me. <laughs> okay, all right. And um, for some, your your what sort of childhood? Did you have some say well you probably maybe had a silver spoon in your mouth you went to some of the best schools fetch mortar and the like um i i come from a family of five siblings i have two brothers two sisters where, where are you in the i'm the last one ah i'm the last one of um, a pet well no not really i mean yesterday i was somebody was telling me that i behave like i'm the first born because i'm quite outgoing and i don't behave like a last born that is late but Okay. Um, but yeah, I guess um, we 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 had we had great um, a great upbringing. My my parents were strict disciplinarians. Um, my mom was an educationist. My dad was a telecommunications engineer, and I I was privileged to have had the opportunity um, of going through some good opportunities and and in in my education now for for my education i went through chrysler king to achimota um to uh, tech of uh, k and usd now um, i did my masters in legon as well all right so that was a pretty awesome childhood you'd say well I'm, i guess i guess i'll say it was i was privileged to have had that that opportunity okay. idea. and your dad was a telecommunications engineer yes my dad was oh. a telecommunications is that where the influence came from did i doubt they, did, I, did they i mean i mean did you even understand what your dad was doing no 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 because he was always <laughs> talking about in massat and and frequencies and stuff like that i i got into telecoms through marketing um of course eventually i need to understand i needed to understand the technical aspects of 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 uh, of telecommunications but I, unfortunately, at the time that I got into telecommunications, the old man had passed away. Okay. But yeah, I mean, he he was passionate about telecommunications. Did he have books that? Perhaps yeah, 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 yeah. He had loads of books. He he had loads of books. He he wrote a lot of articles. Mm -hmm. He worked with the Pan African Telecommunications Union. He worked in Mansart in the UK. So he 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 was he was deep into into telecommunications. I remember when he was outside. When he writes to you, half of the letter would be about what is new in the telecom space yeah yeah all right um, so when what sort of child were you when you were in school were you, because now you say you know a lot of people think that maybe you are the eldest because of the way you are and you act were you that or you were a bit more reserved inwardly looking how were you um i don't think i was reserved but i was i was i think i was calm um but i stood up for leadership positions whenever the opportunities arose i I think um, I have some natural tendencies in me to to lead people to to work with people and um, 
Uh, yeah, I guess that's what it is. Did people pick on you when you were in school? Did anybody try to bully you in school? Uh, I'm not too sure. When I was in Form 1, my elder brother was in Form 5, so I had some kind of protection. Even though he used to <laughs> discipline me discipline me quite, quite a lot if I went wayward. And um, I'm not too sure that I was picked on on unnecessarily i guess it's it's part of boarding school life and i mean once in a while you'll be teased once in a while um you'll be made to feel uncomfortable once in a while you'll be made to feel like they you know that you are but i mean when you grow up these things sort of get out of you so but it's a big issue now especially bullying in school and now we have you know cyber bullying and the like so i, I think the kind of something i that think the kind of bullying that we had then um has evolved and 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 yes, it, it, there's too much aggression in the kind of bullying, and um, I, I I do agree with the the banning of bullying um, in, in in schools. It's it's it, it's it's not it's not something that we should encourage. I mean, it's not something that should be seen as a tradition. I mean, in school, I mean, you can you can always bring people up without giving them the experience of being bullied, and I I I, I fully agree with those. Okay. You are Nene. 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 Nene George. Ander. Nene George. And yeah. what does a Nene mean? Nene is a Futu. It means Nana. So I come from the royal, um, royal family. So yes, that's that's Nene. the name that. I how did your parents call you then? Nene. Nene. So yeah. that's how people know you as Nene. Well, close family know know me as Nene. Close family and friends know me as Nene. Close friends will probably call me Kojo. Officially, they call me George. Oh, I see. I see. And you spent most of your time in Accra, or you were or going back to Futu? When I was young? Yes. Um, I think we used to do that um, once or twice in a year when we were kids, or so even though it was a funeral. But yes, I was born and raised in Accra. I was, I, I did school. So you went there for Christmas and parties. Yeah, it was more, it was more the new year. I mean, I remember it was, it was something that we all used to do, all the cousins, all the uncles and aunts. It was like a picnic kind of a thing, and um, we have some nice pictures of us in the bootleg trousers and um, afro hairs um, in those days yeah okay. i know for a lot of young people you know when you're growing up and you're going to school even secondary school uh, your parents help you to choose a course because you don't know what you want to do at that mm. I, in that moment did you have that kind of help and then when you went to tech biochemistry mm. what was the thinking behind it um okay so so i, I think when when I realized that probably being a veterinarian was not my calling, <laughs> um, I still had the the passion to do something that was science inclined, and so I had the opportunity to go to tech to do biochemistry, and I had some fantastic friends in the class: um, Squirrel, Nash, uh, Mafio, Pound. Oh, State. before you continue, you mentioned Squirrel, Nash, and the like. Those are nicknames. Squirrel. Yes, yes, Squirrel. You had a nickname. I, I think I was called George or G. I mean, G. I, yes, or oh, George. Oh, but and anything. You know? No, I didn't. Like bulldozer. No, 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 I didn't. I didn't, why? I didn't have any, why? any of those why? wild things. Why? I, I don't know. It just, it just didn't happen. I, maybe people were much more comfortable calling me George or just calling me G. All right. Yeah, so yeah. that's, you know, how you ended up at... You know, yeah. And, 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 and so, and so well, I mean, the opportunity that we had was, was by UKM and we decided to make the most out of it at that, at that time. So... Um, yeah, we, we went through tech, we, we did biochemistry, um, I, I did my um, industrial attachment in a number of firms, um, I did my national service at the Food Research Institute, and I guess that is where my love for marketing sort of developed. What uh, exactly did you do at the uh, At the Food Research, Research Institute, Institute, I was attached to the cassava processing unit, and um, we were actually packaging or producing and packaging um, Gary, um, that was actually of a better nutritional value and um, the whole packaging was much much better it was mainly for people that were exporting and there were always long queues and we couldn't actually uh, meet the demand and they were also using a different variety of cassava that had a higher yield and so I, I mean I started learning these basic things I mean how do you get how do you add value to the product and I realized that that was all what marketing represented. So I, I fell in love with marketing and I, I went into the University of Ghana Business School and then did my, my master's in marketing. Okay. 
For someone to move from biochemistry, and you know we have this perception about people in medicine, they are boring, one, that they don't know how to talk, as in public speaking is such a huge problem for people who are like uh, in the sciences. How did you, you know, you make that transition and fitting and be very smooth at it? How, where did that well, come from? I don't, I don't think that that perception is, is right. Oh, I, I know doctors. There are a lot of doctors for well, you know, on the, on the yeah. flip side, yes. on the flip side, I mean, with all the sciences, you have to be defending your proposals. You have to be defending your findings. And so the ability to speak is, is actually one of the strengths that you build in your, in your science career because you, 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 it's a logical thing and you need to be able to convince people what why this is the conclusion that you are drawing you need to convince people why you went through this process what methodology you used and so even among your peers i mean if you're having discussions among your peers the ability to speak and to convince is something that comes with 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 having a science a science background so i i don't think that that perception is right i mean i think it's probably an individual thing um but yes i i I, I made a transition from, well, I won't call it transition, I'll, I'll probably say I built, I built on, on my science background and then went into, into business. And I guess that gave me a unique opportunity because I tend to see things differently. I, I tend to have a logical process why things should happen. I tend to, to have the composure to go back and do a stop and think when things don't happen the way that they're supposed to happen and to be able to go and go and fix it. And of course, I, 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 I respect and appreciate the work that other people have done because that, that sort of opens an opportunity for you to also move on. So I, I think I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a practicing biochemist per se, I'm a professional biochemist, but yes, the principles of biochemistry and the principles of science affect my lifestyle, affect the way that I work, affect the way that I think, and I'm proud of it. Okay, so when you, you were done with the MBA, yeah. marketing, mm. uh, what was the first job? Um, Did you have to do a bit of intention? I mean, to, to, for well, the when, when, I, when I was, when I was um, in the University of Ghana Business School, I, I again had the opportunity to, to do an attachment with Media Magic. And um, um, the, the, the MD at that time, Gedi Lai, uh, one of my coaches, one of my mentors for life, um, massive respect, sir. Um, when I was leaving, he asked me, so what are you going to do when you finish school? And I said, <laughs> I'm going to look for a job. And he, he told me that, you know, when you finish, you have your first job here. And I'm like, wow. So when I finished my, my master's, I, I had a job with, with Gedi Lai. Um, I, I was working as account director for um, quite a number of brands um, under the stable of the Nestle stable, the Unilever stable. By account director, you mean managing products, is that it? Yes, I mean the adver advertising the side oh. side of that. And so you're basically the main interface between the advertising agency and the client. Okay. And you go to the client, you receive the briefs, you discuss the brands and then your proposals and stuff like okay. that. What did he see in you? How could he have just entrusted that those accounts to you? What did he... Uh, well, I don't know what Getty saw in me, <laughs> but, but I saw in Getty a coach, a mentor. I saw in Getty somebody that was a go-getter, somebody that could help me um, bring out the best in me. And, and Getty, Getty was, would push you to, to be the best that you can. And I think he probably saw a bit of potential in me and he decided to to take me and give me that opportunity. And how many years were you with him? I was there. I was there for under a year. Um, okay. I I I then moved to the client side. So I moved to the client side to to work as a brand manager for Guinness. Um, Even before you get there, was it difficult leaving? Well, I I I think Getty made it easier for me because when I told him that I'd gotten the offer. Um, he asked me which company it was, which brand I was going to work, work on, and he told me that was a fantastic brand, and 
he actually said, listen, you go out there and then let's see what we can do together whilst you are there. Did you apply to Guinness? Um, yes, I did. Okay. Yes, I did. I did. And you I went did. through an interview. I did. I went through an interview. Oh, it tells I, all the interesting questions they asked you. Well, I, 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 I remember what, one, thing, one thing that stood out for me is at that time I didn't used to drink alcohol. I'd never tasted alcohol in my life. Wow. And and at that time I, I applied to be the brand manager for Malta Guinness. Okay. And so there were two of us that made the final stage of the interview. My friend and um, Helen Helen Selby at that time. Okay. And I was I was going for brand manager Malta Guinness. And I assume Helen, I assume Helen was going to be given the brand manager for Guinness. for Guinness for an extra stout. <laughs> so um, I was called that I had been successful, so I should come for my letter. So I went to the office for the letter. I saw the secretary of the marketing director. They gave me the letter, and I opened it, and it says you'll be appointed brand manager MG. And so I asked the secretary, what does MG mean? And she said, no, sorry, you've been appointed brand manager FES. Okay. So I asked the secretary, what does FES mean? says for an extra stout. I said, which one is that? He said, that is the real Guinness. And I said, no, I think there's a mistake on it because oh. I, I applied for Malta Guinness. And she said, okay, then go and see Mr. Damali. Mr. Damali too is another, another coach of mine. Mr. Damali, good morning. If you're watching, thanks for everything. <laughs> um, so I went into Mr. Damali's office and I asked him, I told him that I think there's a mistake on my on appointment letter. letter. And he said, is that about the salary? Um, and that you, you, you have to start working before you can ask them. I said, no, sir, it's not about the salary, it's about what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, you know, I, you asked me during the interview whether I drink alcohol, and I said, said no. no. And so I was, uh, I was applying for Malta Guinness. And he says, oh, that, I want you to bring those people that are not drinking Guinness into the Guinness fold. So I'm sorry, this is not negotiable. Wow. So, so that, was, that was one thing that I remember during that <laughs> process. And for me, it was about overcoming challenges in life. I mean, for, probably that was my first practical lesson of, of, of overcoming challenges in life. And um, I had a fantastic development opportunity at, um, at Guinness. I cut my teeth under, under a lot of people. I met a lot of people. I met a lot of coaches. I met Mr. Togo Mensa. I met uh, Mrs. Nokodia. I met Mrs. Francis Vobe. I met, I met, I guess those were the times that I actually realized that i was building myself up for something okay and, I, I, and, and I they, I, they actually set set me up these are the people that gave me the opportunities in life and set me up to work on great brands okay i i want to pick on that you know non-alcoholic mm. uh, dream becoming an alcoholic mm. as in you no, no i'm not as, no no, as, no, no, as no, no. I'm, I'm not an alcoholic don't <laughs> <laughs> no no not you no 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 i meant i mean going in for a non-alcoholic beverage i'm yeah. thinking that you would manage that too that yeah. and you saw it as a challenge yeah. that you had to overcome yeah but did, did it ever cross your mind did you think that you know what i'm not going to do i'm not going to yeah for whatever is worth did ever did you ever have doubts that it wasn't going to be successful well, I couldn't yeah I, initially I thought it was a mistake uh, like I said I thought yes, it was a mistake yes. uh, but when I realized that mr. Damale had deliberately put me on that and uh, because he probably saw something in me and uh, the, the, the for me the flattering aspect there was that the Guinness brand was a flagship brand and the multi Guinness, multi -Guinness was 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 like a, a, a slightly smaller brand but the company was called Guinness everything was about Guinness so it was it was a bigger challenge it was a um a bigger opportunity uh, for me at that time and i guess i guess that that seemed to to show me w what to be looking out for and not to turn my back on on on, on that opportunity that i had been given and you happen to have made it really really big because even i was not <laughs> taking guinness but I want to think about Guinness. You're thinking Michael Power, like it, it made you powerful. It made you invincible. Why did why do you do those you know kind of concept when you you're meeting you're thinking about the brand expanding it? What is it that go into it? Well, I, I I wouldn't say that I was solely responsible for the growth or for the building of the Guinness brand image. There are a lot of people that I work with. I work with some great teams on the Guinness side. I work with some great teams on the global Guinness account. They feel they come to you. So. I work, I work with some great advertising agencies. I think Linters was the advertising agency at okay. that time. And, and I mean, the concepts that Linters, the brand building concepts that Linters developed at that time were out of the world. I mean, they were locally relevant. What, the, the thing about Linters th that at that time was they made everything locally relevant. And so we could cut across. It was, we were talking to the people. We were talking to the consumers. They felt like again, it was a brand for them. And, and it's, it's not, it wasn't really about physical strength or physical power. It's about 
it's about um, it's about the inner strength of you, of, of the individual. Is what what Guinness brings up out in you is is that that drop of greatness that there exists in everyone. And I guess that's what we were doing. And and because it was both an emotional and functional attraction, it made the Guinness the Guinness brand fly. And 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 that's that's something great. Okay, how many years were you with them? Um, I did I did Guinness for for I think two and a half years, and then I. I had an opportunity um, to go and head the, the card center, the Sika card center as SGSSB. Um, at that time, um, SGSSB oh, was just Arriba. taken off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At that time, SGSSB was just, um, had just been bought by Societe General, or they were in the process of transitioning. And so um, I was brought in to come and manage the card center. We're actually going to do a transition to. Were you poached? Um, did they contact you? you uh, well, no, I was approached by a headhunter, yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can say that I was approached. Okay. Yeah. So, when, when they come for you, I mean, when I say they, I mean, a company uh, okay. admires, look at your line of work and admires it and say, we think that's the right guy for us. What does that do to your, your psyche? Um, I, I think it, it, makes, it makes me feel like this is the next phase. There's something else for me to do. Um, I... I, I used to love being in my comfort zone, so I didn't like taking out, going out of my comfort zone and doing something different. But as far as my career was concerned, I've had these these moves that actually take you out of the comfort zone. And for me, the good thing is that for every every opportunity that I've had, I've I've had great teams to work with. And within the period of my leaving. I think I've almost become redundant because there's probably somebody knocking on my door. There's somebody who, <laughs> who, who we've trained, somebody that we've worked with, and somebody who's ready now to step into my shoes. And I'm convinced that the, the business is not going to go down, the brand is not going to go down. And so when I take on a different challenge, it's something that, that, that um, I, have, I, have, I don't have guilt about where I am coming from. But um, like I said, at, at, at SGSSB, I was supposed to be um, heading the card center to move into international fun, um, card, card in visa, card, to, visa, to, right. move to visa. Okay. And the project was supposed to happen within six months. And that was, that was one of the things that excited me. I mean, my boss, Hamza, may he still rest in peace, um, was very clear that within six months, we should, we should transition the SICA card into international um, um, brand card. And unfortunately, the transition with SGSSB took took forever, and so nothing right. much. Well, I mean, there were legal issues that had to be addressed, so the whole transaction hadn't fully gone through. Okay. And and so, as far as what I was brought in there to do was concerned, I wasn't able to do it because of the circumstances. And I I I, I kept my relationship with when my one of my coaches again at, at Guinness is very good to so, keep so relationship to you well, to let me let me okay. tell you so right. so one of my coaches at Guinness he used to be the marketing director in Nigeria when I was a brand manager he was actually one of those that interviewed me for the job and he 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 kept an interest in me and um, he had moved to to the London office to go and work uh, as the in the global brand team and um, he came to Ghana and he gave me a call to come and visit him in the hotel so i was in his hotel we're chatting he said so joy what are you doing and i told him and he was like you don't look happy <laughs> it's like you know you're not enjoying the action and <laughs> and i said nah i'm not enjoying the action at, 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 on, on the card sure. and he's like you want to come back to guinness i said well there's an opportunity so the next day i was called by the hr director and the md at guinness and he have a chat with me and it's okay come back to guinness so um i resigned wow. from, from ssb and took up the opportunity at guinness for the second time um, I then worked with the teams, worked with brands, uh, exciting brands. Eventually, um, Guinness, uh, uh, yeah, Guinness, and then um, Ghana Breweries merged to form Guinness Ghana Breweries. So there was a, lot, a big portfolio of brands that I was um, looking after when I became um, head of marketing, eventually marketing director at, oh, okay. at, at, at Guinness. All right, and then or Ariba came. In. And then Ariba, uh, <laughs> Ariba uh, uh, came, uh, uh, and you had to leave. Again. Yes. Yes, I had to leave again. Um, that was a difficult. That was a difficult time um, because I just a new MD had just come in, um, and he was a marketing person, Mr. Shania Deto, and I think we had a fairly good relationship. And um, I, I, I had to leave. It was 
was very difficult for me to tell him. Well, I, what was uh, difficult about it? Because he he spoke my language. He spoke he 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 thought like I think. He he liked action like I did. Um, I remember when he came to Ghana the first um, the first dinner that he hosted for his friends. He invited my wife and I, and and so. It was it was more than work for Shani and I at that time. A lot of people would not know that, but I mean, um, and and Shani would push you as well, and and I like that kind of work. So I don't think that for one Shani thought I would think of leaving leaving Guinness, but I, I think I've done Guinness for a while, and I, I saw what the telecoms industry was like. I thought that it needed some. Uh, some transformation as far as marketing was was concerned. Was it daddy? Was it what? <laughs> daddy. I doubt if it was. I doubt. I doubt if it was because at that time the old man had even passed away. He yeah. wasn't. He wasn't alive at that time. But I, I, I think when you look at at the the industries in Ghana, first there was a kind of a revolution in the financial sector and. Everything marketing was having was happening in the financial sector. Then he moved to the FMCGs, and everything marketing was happening in the FMCG. So there was a lot of competition. There was a lot of aggressive marketing. Um, there was a lot of um, um, recruitment activities and loyalty initiatives, solid brand building initiatives. Yes. And I guess the, at that time, in my mind, the only space available was um, the telecoms industry, and probably. Uh, as far as service is concerned, was the telecoms industry, and I'm probably going into politics. Okay. And I, I, I thought I needed um, some more grooming, some more training, some more building of my leadership skills. And so I, I, I considered that opportunity at, at um, with with MTN, um, Scancom Ghana Limited, when I was approached to, to um, have it have. To have a chat with uh, my MD at that time, Mr. Brett Goshen. Okay, you 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 is it a, is it a love for the brand to the extent that you had to even die? Your, your well, I, I, you know? I, I think what, I can, what was it? I, mean, I, I come from a certain school of thought that wherever it is that your bread and butter is at that time that you are there, you should be extremely loyal to the brand and you should try and make a difference. So, um, I guess that is that is the mentality that I use and and. You, you, for you to to enjoy working on the brand, you need to be passionate about the brand. And it, the brand needs to be in your blood. You need to live the 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 brand. And I guess that was one one of the things that um, I've tried to always do on with all the brands that that I've worked with. And one of the things that most of the teams that I've worked on have also picked up. And so I I, I, I remember I think I was having this chat with Richard, my colleague at Guinness at that time. Sorry, well, yeah, well Richard yeah, was my yeah. colleague at Guinness, and oh, he and also again, moved. Yeah, with, yeah, with yeah. Now. Yes, and 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 we're asking ourselves, what can we do differently? So we talked about all the visibility initiatives, all the promotions, all the events that we could do, and then I asked him, so what can we do to ourselves? I mean, us, what what can we do to leave the brand? Because the MTN brand had some some solid leadership, uh, some solid values, and those I think are values for life. And um, the can-do spirit was one of the values. So I was like, what can we do differently that will bring out these, these values? Also, we talked about, I mean, clothing and stuff like that. And I think the day before, or the, the afternoon of the launch, Richard and I went to the barbers. And, and we got went to have a shave. And it was, we, I just asked the barber, do you have yellow dye? Oh. And the guy said, yes, we can, we can actually dye your beard yellow. So we were like, okay, so why don't we do it? So it was something that was spontaneous. So I, mean, I think Richard also dyed his beard yellow. I did, I did mine. Richard had a bit of hair, so he did his hair as well. And um, um, I didn't dye anywhere else apart from <laughs> my beard. And um, so that was it. And we went for the launch and it was, it was great. How many years? I, I think I did... I did I did MTN for almost three years. Okay. We what? did we did the the Africa Cup of Nations sponsorship in two thousand and eight. Um, supported the World Cup, and then um, after the World Cup, there was there was Airtel that was coming to Africa at that time. Um, again, I had read about the Airtel brand because at that time they were my competitors, and I I when I was approached 
to join Airtel, of course not in the Ghanaian market, but in the Nigerian market. I thought that was a great challenge. You, you seem to have worked, let's say, five years. You don't really... Have you been in any company for like 10 years? I've been in my marriage for... <laughs> For 12 years. For 12 years. Okay, so that's, that's the only one that, I mean, you're going to No, that's what I like to say. That's what I like No, you, you haven't been. Why? Does it get boring for you? When you you get to do the same thing over and over again, does it get boring? You think about what, where not my next talent part I, I don't think be? I don't think boring is the right word. I, I, I think... The appropriate word. I, I, I think it's, it's more of... Is there something else for you to do? have you have you tried to do it all where you are is there a bigger is there a different opportunity for you to get personal and career fulfillment and of course um, sometimes there's some financial consideration that comes with it as well so when i consider the the personal financial career fulfillment and of course i i i look at it versus where i am currently and and um, I have the support of my family and my friends and those are my coaches and my mentors and, and those that matter as far as decision making in my life is, is concerned. Okay. Um, I, I don't hold back. Okay. Do you flirt with the telecommunications industry? I mean, uh, MTN... Uh, uh, well, you was, you was <laughs> flirted. You know, you know... I mean, I, mean, oh, 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 I mean, you, you joined about three of them. I served... I had the opportunity to serve in three um, organizations, um, Scancom, MTN, Ghana. Um, why, why telecommunications industry when you could have gone outside of it? Why move from one competitor to another? Because I didn't think I'd finish what, what um, I, I wanted to do in telecoms. And, and um, one, I one did, of them, you could have done it with one of them? I did, I did, I did MTN in Ghana. I did Airtel in Nigeria, totally different market. Okay. okay. I did Glow in Ghana in a different position. I was head of, I was uh, the, the chief operating officer, so basically managing the operation in, in Ghana. Okay. And then I did Glow back in Nigeria where I was looking at marketing promotions for Ghana, Benin, and, and, and Nigeria. So it wasn't, it wasn't like doing the same thing. It was working in different environments, working with different teams, learning under different different um, leaders I mean um, the opportunity to learn under somebody like Micah Denuga is something that people will cherish for life okay. and then I appreciate that opportunity as well. Under what circumstance what was the circumstance that motivated you to leave MTN? Um, I think at MTN I'd won marketing practitioner of the year I'd won um, best chief marketing officer of the group um, I, I, I had a team that was ready knocking on my door to to move out. I mean, Clement was probably better than me. Richard was coming up. And I, 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 I thought that opportunity in Nigeria would, would actually build me more. So I did take that opportunity. And no amount of money would have made you stay? I don't think at that time it was about money. It was, it was about having a different market. It was having a bigger market. It was about having, working on a different brand. And the Airtel brand was an exciting brand, or is an exciting brand. If you look, if you read the history of the Airtel brand, and in India, then where where they came from, the story is an exciting one. And so I I was I was excited to have the opportunity to work on the Airtel brand. When was this about money? I don't think money has ever only has ever been the the only consideration. It would never be the only consideration. Like I said, it's, it's not just about the financial fulfillment. There's also career fulfillment that you're looking at. Um, and then there's personal fulfillment for, for my family, for, for those that matter, matter to me. So, um, I, I, um, I, in fact, there, there have been some, some moves that I have made that I actually, I, I was actually worse off financially. Mm -hmm. But I think that the opportunity to learn, the opportunity to, to, to do something different sort of um, um, overshadowed the, the financial um, loss that, that I, I had to take. Okay. I know you have a marketing consultancy um, and uh, we'll, we'll talk more about that but what was the thinking behind you know, Glow? What, what was the strategy for Glow in Ghana? Um, 
Well, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to, to <laughs> talk about the strategy. In terms of look. getting Ghanaians to using it, because the, the perception is that you and Mark, maybe you have to correct me on this, that you know, it is hard for people to change, to move numbers. I mean, it's never easy for a telecommunications company to penetrate into the Ghanaian market. So how, how, what was the strategy to get Ghanaians to say, you know what, we should probably dump this network and go for the other? Knowing that you work with some of them and know their key strategies. Um, I... I I'm reluctant to to talk about, about a company strategy okay. when I don't work for the company strategy. Okay. But I can talk about it from the consumer point of from view, the from consumer. the subscriber point okay, of view. I think most of the subscribers were complaining about the service quality and and um, um, data or the, the whole industry was moving towards data. And, and Glow had quite a lot of capabilities as far as data was concerned. Glow was seen as, as an African brand for mm -hmm. Africans. And, and GLOW had, tr had been in Ghana and there was a perception that GLOW would understand the Ghanaian market better than any of the other brands that were not seen to be really West African. Okay. And you looked at what GLOW had done in Nigeria and of course the fact that GLOW was able to land the submarine cable in Ghana then opened up the opportunity. And, and it's quite exciting that GLOW, the GLOW used um the reserve your number um concept so it, it became like your personal identity and i remember at that time there were queues at our service center where we launched for people to retrieve their numbers i mean i think it took about three four months before we were able to clear the backlog we we had to get the staff to work um, longer hours and we had to open more more outlets we had to serve customers from outside um get canopies out there and so um, there was excitement that was created to try and address a certain gap that the consumer had at that time. And I guess that's what we, that's what we try to do. All right. But back to the consultants. You said that you, you won it all. I mean, marketing man of the year, chief marketing officer of the year, and the like. And then you've done telecommunications industry. Why was it okay? You will stick with the marketing consultants. And now you want to do politics. Why? Um, you know, in corporate Ghana, you 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 can't do frontline politics um you have to be extremely professional in in the things that you're doing but and, have you always been political not in i think job, i think have you always I had think, an association with the NPP? i think everybody who's of a good and sound mind is political either way you're political in your marriage you're political in your church you're political in everything that you do and so um yes everybody should be political um you you may not be active you may not be into frontline politics but but yes um or you may not be into partisan partisan politics but yes everybody everybody should be political um i have i've always believed in the ideologies of the mpp or the ideology of the mpp uh, development and freedom i, I admire our flag bearer i admire um our, his running mate um, I believe in, in, in their leadership skills. I believe in, in the legacy that His Excellency President Kufu um, left when he was um, the president of Ghana. And, and I believe that MPP can make Ghana work again. It doesn't mean that I don't have friends in the other side. I mean, I have, I have very good friends on the, on the other side. I, uh, some people have been uh, teasing me or some people have been putting out some stories about my relationship with with the president i i am i'm flattered um um and i think that uh, well let's leave it at that <laughs> <laughs> i wish i wish you would you, you would but what do you want to get out of politics what, what is the um to get i out? i think i think it's it i i don't okay so so i dr baumia um once said that if he looks at the youth in ghana he doesn't believe that the quality of leadership that we are giving to Ghana is what Ghana deserves. And I agree 100% with that. I, I don't think that we should develop our leaders just for industry or, or just for multinational companies to, to grow. I, I think that we should put Ghana first. And, and I think that the time for me now is to put my skills, my competencies, and my service to Ghana, to the people of Ewu Chisinia West, to, to bring change in their livelihood um, and to enable them to work with them to get the power to, to give them the power to do more for themselves, for their communities to and then for their country. Do the people know you? 
Um, I don't think that if the people didn't know me, I would have won the primaries. And if, uh, if it be, I mean, it's, it's a, you campaign, you go around. But well, so when you go around, you get people to know you, innit? Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, once I won the primaries, I had, there were six of us that were competing in the primaries, um, and I won. I, I won with over 50%, I think it's over 53% out of the six people. So, yeah, as far as the delegates, the MPP delegates were concerned, that was a massive endorsement. Um, the good thing is that all the six of us are solidly united um, for the 2016 agenda. Um, we have we have some great great individuals, some great teams that we are working with okay. on ground to 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 turn the situation around. If you can say, okay. I'm I'm trying to become a, a, a heavyweight, move, <laughs> move away from a novice to become a heavyweight, heavyweight. one one police station at a time. But your opposite number one with 95, 97 percent, I believe. Doesn't that scare you? That she's well solid on the ground. Well, you see, the thing is that those that voted for the NDC um, primaries are supposed to be NDC members. Uh, if you look but at... But you had about 50 plus from NPP. You see, the electoral college is different, even though percentage is percentage. Okay, and it also, it also depends on the quality of your competitors at that time. If I had six, if, if you have six top quality competitors and you get 50% plus, okay, versus two, where it's like i mean there's a big difference okay then you cannot just be looking at the percentage figure and say that that is something to compare with mm -hmm. um, i don't know whether you've seen or you've had a look at the results of of the ewitisunia west constituency in the last um uh, in the last election the 2012 election um if you look at it from the presidential and the primaries um you can see a clear a clear opportunity that if we work on ground at the polling station, we're able to turn this thing around. It would just in your West, um, the, the electorate in the West, in your West is extremely discerning at this time. Okay. Um, I mean, when I go around you the polling station... You haven't been discerning before? I say they're extremely discerning at now. this time. Okay. Extremely discerning. Okay. If you go around the polling stations, it's, it's, not, it's not just us talking to them, but them also talking to us. And the assurance that they're giving that this time around, they are not going to be um, um, they are not. They are not. They are not going to be, to be, confused, or they are not. They are not. They are not going to be, to be made to vote because of last minute projects. They are not. They are not. They are not going to allow people to come and buy their votes. If you bring money, they'll take it because they believe that the money is stolen with all this corruption that's happening in Ghana. So if you bring the money, they'll, they'll take. And I think. So you believe? You believe is, is that what has been happening in the constituency? Yes, and I think. And I th and are I paying think, their way through. They're doing last-minute projects. Well, if you go to Wisinia West, you see it, and it's, it's happening in most of the in most of the constituencies. Well, was your wife supportive? Your family, your immediate family, were they supportive of your decision to pursue? My politics? family and friends, and my my coaches, my mentors, my parish priests have been extremely supportive. Even people that I didn't know. I, I, I go somewhere, I meet somebody, Georgian, that we support what you're doing. And, and I think that is flattering. All right. Thank you. Thank you're you very much for doing this. Yeah, but welcome. what do you do for fun? I hardly see you smile and say, oh, that's how your face is. I mean, yes, you're, you're very like, but what do you do for fun? When you're not, you know, seriously, you know, strategizing, marketing, what is it that you're doing? <laughs> or, or going to the constituencies too. Well, to I mean, I, of late, I spend quite a lot of time in the constituency. Um, what do I do for fun? I, I think when we, we win this election, it will be a big plus for me. And, um, and working, working at the polling station, working with my constituent executives, working with the youth in Senya that have been extremely fantastic, I think for me, that is fun. That's excellent. Uh, um, this afternoon, or I guess at 10 o'clock, I'm sure you're aware that Dr. Baumia um the the prophet is going to he's going to talk he's going to talk i hear he's going to talk about about the economy he's going to talk about incompetence and i guess that is also going to be a quite a bit of fun for me you 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 you'll be there as well. thank you thank you so much for joining us in our studio time, yeah. and uh, george ander was our guest on uncovered he's a father of four he has two boys and two girls so he's such a proud father and we wish him the very best in his political career